Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Homebrew Horology. Today I'm going to be talking about how I designed this tourbillon from scratch. Now a brief history on the tourbillon. Uh, it was a mechanism developed by Abraham Louis Breguet in 1795. He originally made this for use in pocket watches, which were constantly in the upright position in one orientation. He conceptualized a mechanism that would effectively cancel out the effects of gravity by taking the entire escapement mechanism and rotating it along an axis. The result was a mechanism that looked like this, where you can see clearly that the carriage that houses the balance wheel and escapement is rotating. While many of the wristwatches of today don't necessarily need a tourbillon to be more accurate, because people wearing wristwatches always move their wrist around, that doesn't stop watch manufacturers from designing watches with tourbillons. In many ways, the tourbillon is an homage to the traditions of Swiss watchmaking. It is the result of centuries of history that went into developing this mechanism. In addition, it showcases the pure technical precision and craftsmanship of the watchmakers who painstakingly craft the hundreds of components that are required from raw materials using centuries old practices and methods. And while the tourbillon is not needed for its originally intended purpose in pocket watches, it has become a staple in the most high-end luxury watches of today. Anyway, before I get started with the video, if you're new to the channel and you're interested in the stuff you see, consider subscribing because I post a new video every Tuesday. And if you're a returning visitor, welcome back. So now without further ado, let's just get started. So on a whim, I sort of just decided to try to design a tourbillon. So I've been working on this design for the past maybe nine hours. It's 12.48 in the morning, and I've been working on it throughout the entire day. Um, this is just the first iteration of the design, and I know that I haven't finished my actual clock design. I haven't put any hands on it or anything, but, but I just kind of thought, you know, why not? I want to try this out, so we'll see how this goes. All right, here's the second batch of parts. Unfortunately, the white filament didn't work out too well. I don't know what really happened, but for now, I'm gonna stick with the green. I'll see you in the morning. just removing the residual support material from some of the parts that I printed. As I've printed many of these parts lately, I'm starting to realize that support material is never perfect, and I can never get the settings dialed in quite right yet, but I think removing the support material is part of the fun, so I, I really don't mind doing it.
I managed to get my hands on a vise to aid with cutting the brass rods. In addition, I got my hands on a dremel, which significantly sped up the time it took to cut these shafts. Now here I am just sanding down the ends of each shaft and measuring them for accuracy. And now for the final reveal of all the parts for my turbion. And here I am just basically assembling it all. Now this was my first iteration of the design, and it's characterized by only using two screws to join the top and the bottom cage of the turbion together, and as you can see here, I'm just inserting brass rods onto the escape wheel side of the turbion. This is something that I changed in the version 2 of my design. Instead of two screws, I use four, which ultimately gives for a much more robust and accurate design. I'm particularly proud of this feature of the design. Um, I really like how just everything fits together really nicely. How the stationary gear um, just screws so nicely into the stand. And how easily the main turbion assembly just fits right over it. Now here I am testing out the design for the first time. Um, I'm beginning to notice that there's some issues with the design, mainly the use of brass rods instead of standoffs and screws for the turbion cage, which ultimately creates inaccuracies in the mounting pivots for the balance components. Here's the second iteration of the design. As I mentioned before, there are four screws instead of two. This prevents the top part of the cage from moving around in relation to the bottom part of the cage, and it ensures that the pivots for each of the balance components are all aligned properly. Now to see everything come together so nicely like that was just so satisfying for me. And on top of that, when I turned the turbion, it, it actually worked. It's always an incredible feeling to see your design spring to life like that. Here I am attaching some screws to the balance wheel to make the frequency a lot lower. And here I am attaching the third wheel to the mounting hole that I added to the stand to see if I can actually turn the turbion via a gear instead of directly by hand. Now that I know that the turbion works, I'm rigging together a quick wooden mount system thing. Um, drilling the holes for it right now.
but I'm also adding a top bridge for the tourbillon so that it doesn't wobble too much. While it does work without the top mount, it does tend to skip a few teeth on the gear. So here I am aligning the top bridge with the pivot that I added in the top cage of the tourbillon and I'm adding some of the standoffs and drilling holes into the wood. And now that I've added the tourbillon bridge, this should, in theory, ensure that the axis of the tourbillon is completely vertical while it's in motion. As you can see right there, the tourbillon skipped a couple teeth, but I made the standoffs adjustable to some extent so that I can actually fine tune the location of the upper pivot for the tourbillon and adjust it based on where the tourbillon tends to skip teeth. So here it is in all its glory. I find it really mesmerizing to watch as it rotates along its axis. And I'm hoping to actually be able to implement this into my clock design because it actually wasn't too hard to design and fine tune. With this design, the vision for my clock is starting to become a lot more clear. I'm thinking that this tourbillon is going to be a 60 second tourbillon, so that it actually becomes the seconds hand of the clock. But until then, I'm going to try to actually figure out how to implement the minutes and the hours hand, which I have not done quite yet. Uh, but that's something that will be done next week. Alright, and that about wraps it up. If you like this video, give it a like, comment down below, and subscribe. It helps me get my word out to viewers who have similar interests, and I will see you next week.